Hey everybody, blessed fall day to you. I am sharing with you a video that I've been trying to do for a while on the charism of virginity and celibacy for the kingdom, living chastity for the kingdom of God, an intentional way of surrendering the spousal meaning of our bodies um, as a gift to God, as a choice, um, orienting us and others to the kingdom that is to come. Um, but also a calling. The Lord does this calling, right? I'm getting ready to celebrate my third anniversary as a bride of Christ, as a consecrated virgin. Um, and as I come about this third anniversary, I find it fun to just reflect on what he's done for me in this vocation, calling me to be espoused to him. I want to read you a passage because this charism of virginity comes from the scripture to live the celibate life for the Lord. Um, is rooted in this spousal mystery of Christ's life given for his church. Um, even in the Old Testament, we see, um, here's Isaiah 62, where God already foreshadows this love he has for his people. And it's very likened to the spousal love of man and woman. He says, you shall be crowned a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord a royal diadem held by your God. You shall no longer be termed forsaken and your land shall no longer be termed desolate, but you will be called my delight. My delight is in her and your land married. The Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. This passage still strikes me, right? Um, as I journeyed in my own vocational call and whenever I doubted many times over and over again, this passage would just well up in my life. It would come back into my life and the Lord would be reminding me of this spousal call. We see this throughout scripture. Another one is um, Psalm 45 where he says, um, daughter forget your own people in your father's house your king will desire your beauty um, pay homage to him there's scripture passages when it more related for the men i guess out there right where it says um you know forget everything like leave father mother um take only a sack and come follow me um, the lord calls us to live like him poor chaste and obedient um, and that is the form of consecrated life, right? It, it takes that form of a following of Jesus Christ. Um, for some of our priests, they would be considered in persona Christi, right? So they aren't necessarily, they're not called brides of Christ, but they are followers of Christ, just like religious brothers are, um, religious priests and diocesan priests. Um, they still have that intimate following with the Lord as we all must, right? As we're all called to. But some of us are supposed to be set apart in the consecrated life to reveal the kingdom to come and how the spousal orientation of our lives is going to be in the end, not married to someone on earth, but espoused to the God of heaven, right? So we see this in scripture, New Testament, Mark 12, where 1225 where Jesus says in heaven they will neither be married nor given in marriage he's kind of foreshadowing there's something more to come that goes beyond marriage on earth marriage on earth is an icon is a vocation that is also an icon of the Trinitarian life this faithful fruitful love amidst God himself um, as consecrated life as we live in consecrated life, it's to be a great dignity, um, lifting up of marriage and vice versa, marriage lifts up consecrated life. They need each other. Um, I'm gonna read you something that's from Vida Consecrata, which is John Paul II's The Consecrated Life. It's an apostolic exhortation he gave. He says, the reference to the nuptial union of Christ and his church gives marriage itself its highest dignity. In particular, the sacrament of matrimony introduces the spouses into the mystery of Christ's union with the church. However, the profession of virginity or celibacy 
enables consecrated persons to share more directly in the mystery of marriage, of this marriage. While conjugal love, marital love, goes to Christ, the divine bridegroom, through a human union, virginal love goes directly to the person of Christ through an immediate union with him, without intermediaries a truly complete and decisive spiritual espousal. Thus, in the person of those who profess and live consecrated chastity, the church expresses her union as bride with Christ the divine bridegroom to the greatest extent. For this reason, it must be said that the virginal life is found at the heart of the church. Right, so we're reminding you in my body as I live out this witness of being solely the Lord. My body is the Lord's, um, my sexuality, right? I'm foregoing marriage and family life. I'm foregoing that union that um, is so beautiful in the marriage vocation um, to be a witness of church wedded to Jesus Christ that we will all know even more intimately when we reach heaven but I'm to be in anticipation of that here and now. So we're sisters, religious sisters, right? As brides of Christ. Now, what is this vocation not? Consecrated life is not a running away from um, bad relationships, or if someone would say, you know, why don't you just wait for Mr. Right to come along? Are you just like not finding him and that's why you wanna like commit yourself to Jesus in this way? No, no, I'm actually being beckoned to say yes to really a marriage proposal from our God. That is a positive yes to a calling that is a free calling and a choice. And it's freely given by the Lord and I'm freely to receive it in my own freedom to say yes to his calling. Where do we see that in scripture? The call in Matthew 19, Jesus is talking to his bros <laughs> and people are saying well if it's so hard for married marriage to um married couples to live and not get divorced maybe we shouldn't get married and jesus says this is for those who have the call this is not for everyone this precept is not for everyone he says in matthew 19 he says but for those whom which it has been given let him live it he says for those who it has been given. It is a gift, right? Um, he says that there are those who've been made eunuchs, so those who've been made celibate because of birth or because of man on earth, or those who have chosen celibacy for the sake of the kingdom to reveal that complete spousal, undivided heart for the Lord in our bodies here on earth, pointing towards heaven. 1 Corinthians 7 talks about this as well. Um, St. Paul goes into a whole spiel about, I want you to be free from anxieties, he says in verse 32. The unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord and how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about the worldly affairs and how to please his wife and his interests are divided. And the unmarried woman or girl is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about the worldly affairs and how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. Some of us are called to that undivided devotion to the Lord and to be a spiritual parent to many people on earth. I want to share something with you from Christian Virginity from ESI. This is an Ecclesiae Sponse Imago new instruction or updated instruction on Ordo Virginum, the vocation that I live, Consecrated Virginity. It says Christian Virginity is an experience of a spousal union, intimate and exclusive and indissoluble with the divine bridegroom, who has given himself to humanity without reserve and forever, thus acquiring a holy people, the church. 
And um, St. Ambrose says, you know, a woman, a virgin is a woman who has married God. John Paul II in Mulieris Dignitatem, the dignity and vocation of women, says, virginity according to the gospel means renouncing marriage and thus physical motherhood makes possible a different kind of motherhood, motherhood according to the spirit. Let me tell you what a gift it is to be a spiritual mother to many. Um, in a very real sense, because I don't have my own children and husband and family, I don't have to come directly home after work every day. I get to be out and about with a lot of people, um, sometimes discerners, sometimes a friend in need, um, sometimes random people who God puts in my life, neighbors, um, families. I get to be a part of a lot of people's lives. And you know what? It actually seems more intimate, the spa or the um, motherhood in the spirit that I get to live because of God's gift of not having my own children, that love kind of pours out to more people. It's really a beautiful, very beautiful thing. So the primary mission and task of the consecrated life consists in making Christ present to the world through personal witness. This is the primary task of consecrated life, to make present Christ in the world through our personal witness. Vita Consecrata. This undeserved gift of the consecrated life, those who have the call, be bold and say yes to the call. When God calls, answer. It is the greatest gift of my life. This is the greatest yes I've ever given on earth. And I pray God blesses me all the days of my life to be a faithful spouse to him and a loving spiritual mother to many. I'm going to pray one last prayer over us from Revelations, the end of Scripture, 22, verse 17 and 20. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Come, Lord Jesus. Let him who hears come, and let him who is thirsty come. Let him who desires to take the water of life without price. Jesus says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. God bless.